Welcome to Fiber Town. Here we are again in my kitchen. I'm Emily and you're very welcome here. Um, I have an unexpected afternoon to do a little podcasting. So I got out all my stuff. I'm surrounded by baskets and piles of fibery stuff. I have hand spun winter to talk about. I have some finished objects, surprisingly. Works in progress, some sewing, some spinning, some just general chat and acquisitions, and I have some mending to talk about. Yeah, so let's go. All right, so the thing that's going on in the Fibertown Ravelry group, which I have put a little thing, I hope, in the beginning of this show, um, go on over and join. Chat. Handspun Winter is going on there. It's a very um, open-ended make-along just needs to be a craft with hand spun. It can be your own hand spun, someone else's. And we've had prizes so far and there will be one more prize because this um, make along is not over until winter's over. And in my neck of the woods, it's still pretty wintry. So yes, I'm gonna be giving away a skein of my hand spun. I don't know which yet. It'll probably depend on the winner and what they like, but it'll be something like this beautiful Wensleydale two ply, isn't that nice? Or this is Suffolk. This is a Suffolk bulky that I spun. This was a gift from my friend Kareen. Um, and if you're not a fan of the this color family, it could be something in the blues and greens. So yeah, that will be the final prize for hand spun winter. Um, there have been several already sent out. I hope you all are enjoying them. There's a lot of good inspiration on that Ravelry group thread, so go take a look. I'm having coffee in my Raven mug. Um, yeah, just tired today, but I'm plugging along here because I have missed chatting with the podcasting world out there. Um, okay, works in progress. No, finished objects. One more sip of coffee because apparently I'm not stringing sentences together as I should. Mm. Okay, so three finished objects. Let's talk about the mitts first. I shall put them on. I've been wearing them constantly. They are awesome. These are my underwing mitts by Erica Hooser, Hauser. I never know how to say it. Oh my goodness. I really, really, really love them. These were knit out of Biche Bouche, Le Petit Lamb's Wool. It is a French company that sources Scottish lamb's wool. Or not just lamb's wool, but wool. Just a little, not quite sure of the uh, connection there, but um, I really loved the colors. It's a very thin fingering, I would say. And it's a two-ply, and I am getting a little, can you see that? I expect pilling on mitts, because honestly, I'm using them and driving. I'm Actually, I'm wearing them to knit in cold rooms. Um, I do like to keep my house cold, but then my extremities do get cold. But that's why we have wool, and that's why I love the winter, because I get to wear wool. So, yes, Biche Bouche, and then this, um, uh, what's it called, Swiss darning um, bit right here, the rust, is a tuku wool. And I did this differently on each mitt. On this, which one did I do? On this one, I left all the plies intact. I think it's a three ply. I think. Maybe it's a two ply. It's a two ply, I think. And then on this one, I separated out the singles and um, just used one ply, but it really didn't have enough twist in it, which can be typical of woolen spun yarns. They, um, I don't know if it's a true woolen spun, the tuku wool. It may be like worsted prep, wool and spun, strikes me as some sort of mix of the two processes in terms of preparation and then spinning. But obviously the, the strength of the tuku wool comes in the plying because once you unply it, it wants to just drift apart. But very happy. I'm happier with the look of the one where I just did one ply. You can see how the three ply or the, the two plies intact, sorry kind of jumps out, but I'm just, I'm not going to rip that out. It's fine. Now you might notice that I have this little saggy droopy drawers effect. I, maybe it's just my hand. I have tiny hands and wrists, um, but I would have decreased some. So this was 
cinched up better. That's okay though. I still get a ton of use out of them. So yeah, very happy with those and I'm actually using this dark charcoal, heathered charcoal, which is not quite a black uh, when you look up close, but then from far away it is. I'm using that in a work in progress. Okay, the other finished object I want to share is one I started on a whim, but not really on a whim because I started this once before, maybe last winter, and it's been on my mind ever since. And that is the Woolly Wormhead collection of hats called Elemental. And they were inspired by The Last Airbender, which is a show my kids liked for a while. Um, yeah, it's a really cool show, actually. And anyway, this is named, this hat is the Toph hat, T-O-P-H. I think it's named after one of the characters. You guys, that Woolly Wormhead lady. People aren't kidding when they say that she is a genius. She truly is a genius. Look at this hat I made. <gasps> could not put it down. Um, my family really couldn't interact with me while I knit this hat because I would just put my hand up, don't talk to me, I'm counting, I'm paying attention, and I really needed a knit like that. I hadn't had a knit that I was just completely immersed in, that I absorbed in it consumed me how many it's a, only a li little bit of hyperbole here that I'm using because it really was absorbing so the tofe hat my version um, was knit out of probably bigger yarns I think it calls for DK and mine was knit out of a DK this gorgeous milk chocolate I think it was a true DK but then my hand spun that I used for the the leaf bits was a hand spun, so it was probably fingering to air and weight, who knows. And I didn't use the full four ounces, but the hand spun, um, I think it was Kim Dye's yarn, I think. And it was a superwash targi, and the colorway was Lord Grantham. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's just got these beautiful blues and taupes and grays and purples and browns, and you can see, I really love that section right there. I did some color management on some of these, but not a ton. I just like, I let it go. I didn't worry too much when the leaves weren't super high contrast. Oh my goodness. Just love it. The background color is um, a Corydale yarn from Serenity Farms in Michigan from my dear friend Carrie. Um, I just love it. Now, the chart for this might be intimidating when you first look at it, but don't let it put you off if you try one of these hats. And I frankly see exponential possibilities for all the rest of the hats. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm going to knit them all. Um, that Woolly Wormhead, go buy her stuff. Her, oh, especially this group. And I know she has a couple other collections. Anyway, um, the charts are like her very own, uh, maybe somebody else has done charts like these, I don't know, but I haven't seen them before. They're vertically stacked in a very interesting way, and you can tell that this is full of short rows, which is why my family couldn't talk to me, because I didn't want to lose my place. I'm sure I did lose my place once or twice, and it was, in the grand scheme of things, if it wasn't the exact number of stitches, oh well. Um... Yeah, so I really love the low contrast effect of pairing these two yarns. I know a lot of people use really high contrast yarns for the different pieces, and I think that's nice too, and you get a little taste of that in this section here. So you knit this hat flat, and it is in garter stitch. So yeah, so one side of the chart is the brim, and the other side, like the left side, is the top of the hat. So what really matters for how long your hat is going to be oh, how, is not your row gauge, row gauge as you would typically think because it's knit flat. What matters for the length of your hat is your stitch gauge. And I hope I'm saying that right because it's been a few weeks since I put this hat down. Is that right? Yes. Yes, I think that's totally right. Okay, yeah. So what matters width-wise is your row gauge. So... I was supposed to do, eight, you're in the pattern calls for eight repeats. I only did seven because my row gauge was bigger because I had bigger yarn. 
but the stitch gauge was also bigger. So I got a bit of a slouch here, which I really enjoy. I love my FOs this week. Really good stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. So yes, I will be making more of these now that I've messed up my hair. Let's fix that again. Anyway, the Toph Hat, T-O-P-H by Wooly Wormhead. I need to cast on another. It would be amazing travel knitting, vacation knitting, I think. Especially for those moments where you have downtime and you just can immerse yourself in your knitting. Okay, let me put these over here. These are just great. Now, oh, let me tell you what I'm wearing. It still hasn't gotten a full wet block. I did steam block it a bit. This is my breezy, my breezy out of St. Kilda. And I've been wearing it a ton with this um, Hadley top, which badly needs a pressing. It's out of double gauze. Um, this is a Hadley top by Green Line, Stu Green Line Studio. Long sleeves. Um, it's out of a double gauze, which is by Atelier Brunette. And I have to say, I'm not a huge fan of this particular double gauze. It really doesn't hold its shape well. Um, hemming it was terrible, just um, pretty wrinkly. <laughs> but I've gotten a lot of use out of this nonetheless. It's been um, it's been a decent shirt, especially since compare it with this. I really enjoy this. I'm still loving my steak sandwich and I haven't changed anything. I know I probably talked about am I going to modify or not? Am I going to add some stitches here or not? No. I do think that the fabric will even out a bit more when I finally do wash this, but I'm going to wait till it actually needs a wash. And the length in the back is fine. It's fine. I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty easy to please, actually, when it comes to most things. Maybe not my food. Not easy to please with my food. But my knitting I'm generally happy with. So, all right, works in progress. Have I shown you? No, wait. Mm. Cold coffee, don't like it. Okay, my um, latest pair of socks, I'm going to get on some sock blockers because these I have just washed for the first time. And they are Zauber Ball Crazy, because that's pretty much what I've been knitting for my sock yarn lately. And this was the colorway Piano Bar. And I thought, just for kicks, I'd get together most of the Zauber Ball Crazy socks. Well, actually all the ones I've knit for myself, I would gather and show you. There are two other pairs that I have knit and given away to family members, including my mother-in-law. Well, my mother-in-law and husband, they each have a pair. So here is sock number one. Pretty, pretty, pretty. A speck of something on there. And this is the second. Now, this one I did some color management because I really wanted to get to this purpley pink marl. You can tell right here I... There's a bit of a line where it doesn't fade as it, as it might have done if I had left it alone. But I wanted to knit with that color, so I did. And yeah, these are great. I have decided to modify my five-year-old sock recipe. Oh, I know. I made a change. And this is the first pair of socks in which I've done that change. And that is to decrease to 60 stitches on the foot. I have a narrow foot, tiny hands, so I decided with this particular sock yarn at least, and maybe it's just that my gauge is changing in general, but with this particular one, because that's what I've been knitting with, I should go down to fewer stitches on the foot. So that's what I have done. So I thought we would do a Marie Kondo display of my pairs of Zauber Ball socks. So just give me a minute to fold as Marie would do. And if you're not familiar, it's the life-changing magic of tidying up Marie Kondo, the one who has the show on Netflix right now. Yeah. And I have to say, I 
rarely take anyone's methodology hook, line, and sinker, and I have not done so with hers, but I do like to take what works for me, throw out the rest. Is this really all I've got? Here they are. This is how I'm doing my sock drawer these days. Mallorwinkle, wait, yeah, Mallorwinkle, jacket and hose, or Jackie Wee Hose. Oh, what's this one? Something sander, sand her, and then piano bar. So I have a tag on my Ravelry notebook with all my projects, which is over 500 projects. And let's just double check right now, shall we? How many, how many Zauber balls? I think it's six, it could be seven in my Zauber ball. Yes, yeah, six. I've also knit with Chocolate Time or Chocolat Den Sight. My German is not, it's completely unstudied. And then I have done Olive and Stressa as well. Now my next Zauber ball will be this one. And this one is Flusbet, which I'm sure I'll look up eventually. However, moving along into works in progress, I'm not knitting on a Zauber ball. Crazy. My piano bar socks I finished on the very last day of February. It was, it was a tight month. It was a short month. I had a lot going on. Not a ton of knitting time. But I did manage to Kitchener that last toe. <laughs> on uh, the afternoon of that um, of that day and it just so happens that I remembered my husband cast on and knit the leg and turned the heel of a pair of socks and then he chickened out I'm telling it like it is he was like he even did the short rows for the heel turn with some help from me and then decided that the gusset was too much <laughs> so those socks well that one sock languished for quite a while and um, yeah, here they are. <sighs> Sadly, aren't they pretty? Sadly, the tag is long gone, but I'm pretty sure this is Fiber Nymph Dye Works in her bounce base, I think. And I, I think the colorway has something to do with birthday cake or Funfetti, because look at those speckles. And I think I bought this at the one and only SSK I attended, maybe in 2016. I don't know, the tag is gone. Um, so if anyone knows, let me know, because I, I would like to know. And uh, yeah, so here they are. I have finished the gusset, and yeah, I've got, it's, we're a week into March almost, and I've got over half a sock done, yeah. I don't know if these will go to my husband, he does like this or if I'll keep them or if I'll give them to a friend I need to try it on see how the leg fits me I know it's 64 stitches I will depending on the recipient I will or will or will not make that new modification to these socks so self striping really fun superwash merino nylon base and uh, yeah a little more delicate than Zauber ball a lot more delicate probably but I did knit a pair of her um, soft kitty colorway in the same base, and they lasted a good few years. So that is work in progress number one. Um, yes, let me show you my sweater, my first new sweater on the needles. My Hog Island Rocaine I have been wearing. Um, I really like it more than I thought I would. So I, if it's still cold, I'll wear it on the next podcast, perhaps. But this is the latest piece of pretty on my needles. Do you recognize this yarn? Okay, the camera is not getting the color correct. This was my hand-spun um, Tunis fleece. Purchased at, yeah, Maryland Sheep and Wool, I'm pretty sure. Maybe 2017. Um, Tunis. Really, like how would I describe this wool? Like chalky. You know, like the feeling, like if you're from the old school, after you clean the chalkboard or wrote with chalk on the chalkboard, got a little bit of that feeling in your hands. Yet it still smells a bit of lanolin. 
Definitely, even after being dyed with matter. So I washed and prepped this fleece in a woolen preparation, carded it. I spun it into a, an Aran weight. Um, yeah, an Aran weight three ply. Again, pretty uneven in places. And even the dyeing is uneven. You can see where bits of the matter root touched the yarn. And in fact, when I wind this, I get a bit of matter dust still falling out of it. Um, but that's okay with me. It's not falling out as I knit it. I think the winding of the yarn gets the last of it out. <sighs> Did I even say what the name of this sweater is? I'm still talking about the yarn. This is the Wolf River by... I think it's Melissa Chasweri. Let me double check. Um, it's knit in pieces, as you can see, and I am doing the back in size large, and I'm going to do the front in size medium. Hopefully that'll work out. I really haven't looked to see if that's going to be an issue. I'll make it work somehow. So this is, yes, Wolf River by Melissa Shaswari. Yes, indeed. So I am almost halfway through the back, and uh, it's a bit repetitive now. <laughs> I will not lie to you. There are some twisted stitches in there you can see. I'm alternating skeins. I'm very happy with how that's looking because I feel like the dye job was pretty even overall except for this one skein. You can see it's a significant difference here. This will be cuffs. That's how I'm going to deal with that, if I need it. That will be for, for striping into the cuffs. Really enjoy this. So yeah, the hand of the wool is very bouncy. Kind of chalky afterfeel. Um, I feel like it's neutral in terms of purple factor. I don't think, I have this on my neck, I don't feel like there's anything on my neck. It's not like, ooh, that's so buttery soft. And it's not like, ooh, that's prickly. It's neutral. It's moyen. So yes, indeed. Can't stop doing this. I want it to have a good amount of ease, and I feel like a large in the back and a medium in the front is a good way to do that. So who knows if that's true. We'll see. And that's my Wolf River. Um, socks, Wolf River. Just and loyal. So, oh, that woolly thistle, talk about her every time. She has, this time of year, she has her mitten knit along. And Fibertrack Sarah had given me this pattern because I am Hufflepuff. And also, interestingly, Sarah's Patronus is the badger. So, yeah, I have one... Hufflepuff Mitten minus the thumb. And this is Just in Loyal, the name of the pattern. It is by, I cannot remember, like, I'll get the name, but nobody's name is on the tip of my tongue today. Paper Tiger? No. Paper Tiger. What's her real name? That's the designer's Ravelry handle. Oh my gosh. American, used to live in Norway. Holy smokes. Hang on. So I've been using this app, Knit Companion, and i I paid a pretty penny for it, but I've been hearing a lot about it. And I thought I'd give it a try. I really like it. Anyway, yeah, so this is Knit Companion. Um, Diana Walla. I'm using the dark is the Biche Bouche, and then the yellow is the Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight. Oh my gosh. Pretty much written to pattern. I think I did something a little different here. Um, like just different number of rows maybe. Um, it fits like a glove, should, even though it's a mitten. I really love the thumb here and um, I've start, I have not started the second. Why am I, I'm, I was about to lie to you and say I've started the second. I don't know why I would say that because I haven't. I'm knitting these on US one and a half. Oh, I should say these are being knit on US nine. Anyway, back to the mitten. I'm a little nervous about not having enough of the yellow. I probably will, but I'm not going to do the thumb yet until I find out if I have enough for the second mitten because I can always get more. Who knows? No big deal. 
And I'm just noticing, I have a rogue stitch here. Do you see that? The little black stitch has escaped. It should not be there. Oh well. Done is better than perfect. Always. No, that is almost it for works in progress. I'm just waiting for the moment. Oh, can I just say, there goes the rest of my stuff. I'm knitting the Justin Loyal bags out of this Matter, Matter Made Fiber Trek Well Scout bag. I love this. It is great for, um, oh my gosh, this is all I have left of the yellow. Anyway, I'm knitting, I'm putting the yellow in this little inside pocket. It's really great for color work because I can use the main pocket for the larger ball. And then the pattern can, or the project can go in there as well. And then I have the contrast color in here. And, <coughs> excuse me, I'm actually knitting the dark color in my left hand, so it's popping out more than the yellow. I was a little worried about these because the Biche Bouche is, is quite a bit thinner than the Jameson and Smith, but I think it's all working out. Don't know why I needed to do, like, the duck face when I shoot, showing you the mitten. It's not a photo shoot. This is not the Kardashians. I don't know why I say things sometimes. Okay, so I'm waiting for the moment to strike. The right energy, the right inspiration coming down from the crone goddess into me to cast on the Samfrey by Marie Wallen. Doo -doo. I've shown you this. This is These are not the greens I'm using. Let's just look at this. Yes, I'm going to cast this on. You got your toy? Somebody's feeling jazzy. I think she went and got a toy. <gasps> Where's Pink Bolly? It's not outside, weirdo. Go get it. Okay, so yes, I'm waiting for this. This is going to be my next sweater. I think I'm going to knit two sweaters simultaneously. Just waiting. It's all in here. It's all in here waiting for the inspiration to strike. As soon as it comes, you'll all be the first to know. So moving along to spinning. Shall we move along to spinning? Okay. So you may remember my first bit of a Jacob Fleece spin. It is overspun. Well, it's overplied. And I had some great comments um, on my video about how to remedy that. And I think I'm going to try putting this back through my wheel to undo some of that ply twist. Fingers crossed it'll work. I'll put it on my Swift and let it come off my Swift onto the bobbin. And I hope it's not a mess. It has the potential to be a mess. But I'm gonna try it. I'm okay with that. So here is the unwashed second skein of Jacob. Much better. So this is unwashed and it's already balanced. So let me skein that a wee bit so you can see the difference. So the first skein was the white fleece. This was mostly white with a bit of the darker brown where the two touched. So I'm already getting a really gorgeous gradient. This one's a bit thicker than this one, but maybe, maybe with some of the twist taken out, this will relax and puff up a bit. That is my hope. Now, other spinning that I have been doing has been for the shifty sweater, possibly. So big possibly. So the shifty is by Andrea Mowry. I don't think I've ever knit one of her patterns. But this one really looked fun to me. And this I'm saying as someone who has knit one thing in the mosaic knitting style and kind of hated it. Oh. So we'll see. Um, all the stars aligned for this, really, because of my fiber campers, I had tons of dyes out that weren't going to be used. Um, just stuff that was left over after dye day. And so what I did was I went on, I looked at the colorways used for the original shifty sweater, and I looked at the price of the spin cycle yarn. I don't want to try to like devalue anyone's work in the fiber industry, but it's like $32 for two ounces of wool. That's not hand spun. 
So I think I priced, I just did a little math, and I think the extra small is just under $300. And the biggest size is just under $600, just for the yarn. And I like spending money on quality yarn, but I could not see doing that. Also, further could not see doing that because I have had a ton of Pennsylvania, pretty local to me, Cormo wool in my stash for a couple of years. Right about the time when I fell out of love with spinning fine wools and knitting with them a lot. I do like knitting with them sometimes. Um, but sometimes they just like, meh. Anyway, I had this really gorgeous Cormo. It is just amazing. Her fleeces win best in show up and down the eastern seaboard, probably other places. Really great wool. And definitely raised with love. Kate is the shepherdess's name. I can't remember her last name, but I know I've said it on here before. Anyway, I had these dyes. I had this wool. I had enough wool. So what I did was I looked on the Spin Cycle website at the different colors used, and I did my best to dye those, or something approximating those. So this one is going to be the main color. And this is the dye, the dye job on that wool. So it's got these kind of sagey browns and russets. And I think which one of my very favorite dyes is chestnut. And I think it's this one here. But some fun things happen when the browns and the greens touch, like there. And this one's kind of bronzy and orangey and rusty and sagey. It's not quite like the Spin Cycle main color, but I like it. I think it'll be great. I have a ton more of that to spin. A lot. Now the other color is this one. So it's blues and purples, um, mostly. Um, kind of a magenta-y purple in places. These are all two plies. So dyed and spun by me, not prepped by me. But um, what was I going to say about this? Yeah, so the spin cycle version of this colorway is much more magenta. But I like where it's going so far. Now the other one, okay, I really like it came out like this. Blues and greens. Not much, not very exciting, but oops, that's not the right one. I've got these all tangled together. You can see that the craziest one is this one. So it's got chart. this is the Jacquard dye chartreuse. Um, it's got purples, it's got other greens, grays, silver, I think I used in that one. So, oh my gosh, this was about, was it about 300 grams? Maybe even more, I can't remember at this point. I spun enough for the size large um, to hopefully err on the side, the, the right side of having, you know, what am I trying to say? I don't want to play yarn chicken with hand dyed hand spun yarn. So hopefully it'll work out. And now mosaic yarn, I think uh, mosaic knitting does use a fair bit of yarn. Um, and it does pull in, I think. So I'm going to knit the size large in case my gauge is weird. It should end up somewhere between a medium and large, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, so that's kind of exciting. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. It's fine. I'll be all right. There are many other things I want in it, including the Yell by Marie Wallen. And the Baby Cables and big ones too. And I have a sweater lot of Tamar by Blacker that I want in it. Yeah. So that's what's going on in spinning. Now, I really should sit down with my mending. And what spurred this on, I have a basket of mending to do. <clears throat> and what had spurred this on was my husband's, my only, the only hand, hand knit sweater I've made him. The bind off on the collar popped out. And I'm going to go right now and see how old this sweater is. It has been a great sweater. It has potentially decades of life left in it. He is knitting himself a sweater right now but I'm going back to my Ravelry notebook I'm really glad I've kept such good a good record of what I've made it's okay oh my gosh this is 10 years old I had no idea it was this old <clears throat> I knit this out of Noro Kurian in the 149 colorway is this 
the cobblestone by Jared Flood, and he wears it a lot every winter. I love this sweater too. That's the back. It's a great, great, great sweater. Um, armpit doesn't look super great, but I never see that. Yeah, there it is. I mean, have we even washed this thing once? It just smells like it's deodorant. It smells good, like aftershave, actually. Um, it's maybe got, this is really embarrassing. Why am I mentioning, why, why am I admitting this? Maybe one wash in 10 years. Honestly, you can just air wool out and it's totally refreshed. But look what happened. I put some waste yarn in these stitches. I need to, need to fix that. This just popped out. It looks like, I don't know if the yarn broke. I don't know. Or if it was like one of those Noro knots that I didn't know to undo. I don't know. I do remember this bind off and I doubt my friend Leanne is watching this. But this brings back memories of being at knit night and me binding off in my very, very tight way that I used to do. Oh, you know what? It's also come apart back here. I'm going to be redoing this whole bind off. Luckily, I can probably use any old brown or gray yarn. Should be fine. Um, wool. Anyway, I bound off and I tried it on and I couldn't get it over my head. And that brings back another memory. Whenever someone would finish something, a garment at knit night, it was Monday knit night at Leanne's house. This group is no longer. But um, whenever someone finished a garment, the rest of us would start to chant, take it off, take it off, because we'd be trying on a new garment. That is neither here nor there and pretty inappropriate. However, I did take it off and I did try it on and I couldn't get it over my head because of my tight bind off. So Leanne took it, she undid the bind off, she rebound off. So I'm just realizing this is Leanne's bind off that the Noro yarn has snapped on or whatever happened, 10 years, that's not bad. Look at this, never once been depilled. It's really awesome yarn, so much fun. It does have a little bit of pilling right there. Got to get done, I've got to get going on that. Maybe I will mend my North Ronaldsey socks as well. I miss those, they popped a hole. Which I suspected they would, they are wool and spun. Crazy staple. Short, uneven. Hey Alice, I'm not getting up to let you out. You can come see with me. Come and sit with me. Yeah, sentences are hard sometimes. Okay, so sewing. I'm going to just pause for a sec. The Morgan jeans. The Morgan jeans. These are closet case design. This is the first non-stretch jeans that I've tried. Do you see my face right now? Mm -hmm. Oh, look at this. They're inside out. Well, I can show you the pocket bags. Here they are. I use some leftover Kalamkari. The waistband is not the best, it's not the worst. I mean, on the inside. Look, I didn't catch the seam right here. I need to go back and I think I might hand whip stitch this down. See right there? Because I don't want to fuss with top stitching on the outside. I'll mess something up if I do that. Anyway, I made a size 14, and let me just turn these right side out so I can show you. I made a size 14 and I tried them on and they were too tight over my robust thighs and hips. Thank you, Sarah, Sarah Fibertrack, for my thigh describing vocabulary. And um, so what I did is I undid the side seams and from about three inches above the knee to the top of the waistband, I changed the seam allowance on the side seam from five eighths to three eighths. So doing that on both sides, that gives me an extra half inch. I was never good at fractions in math. Yeah, probably a half inch. So it gives me an extra half inch, which is just perfect. And again, I did not change this seam at all. But let's just take a moment. Let's just take a moment to look at this crotch, shall we? Look at how nicely things lined up there. 
I did do some top stitching. Didn't use a top stitching needle, which is fine, but it's really hard to get that thick top stitch thread through a regular um, needle eye. I do not recommend it. I put in a zipper instead of buttons. Still need to do the fastening here. Still need to do the fastening on my ginger jeans, which I wear all the time, and I just safety pin them. I have buttonhole issues, you guys. You know this. Here are my pockets. Nothing fancy. Um, I just, I just winged a design. Again, it's pretty good on my yoke, right? My back yoke right here and everything matching up seam-wise. So what I still need to do, because I'm not doing pocket rivets, I need to do some bar tacks, like here, where the pocket joins the side seam. And then um, I need to hem them. I don't know how much I like these jeans. I think I'm going to hem them fairly short and maybe roll them up. And I might like them more. I think the silhouette makes me feel a little bottom heavy. And so I'm hoping if I roll up the jeans, it might balance out the silhouette. They're not as high-waisted as I would like. So the next jean pattern I'm trying is the Dawn Jeans by Megan Nielsen. And I think they are going to be my dream jeans. They are high-waisted mom jeans. I think they're going to be good. I think they're going to be very good. Um, oh, this fabric is Robert Kaufman Ventana Twill. It is a non-stretch cotton twill. It's a pretty nice fabric. It is not... I think I made these for under $30. And, um, you know, it's readily available. The colors. I think this is a good summer color. So I do have some harder to get denims coming to me in the next few weeks. And I really want, two of them are non-stretch. I know I'm gonna make ginger jeans out of the stretch, but I need a good non-stretch jean pattern or pant pattern. So I'm hoping the Dawn jeans will be just the thing. Um, is that it for sewing? Pretty much. So the only other things I have left to show you are kind of acquisitions. So I do have one book. Um, and I do have one sh TV show to talk to you about and then a couple of podcasts, which I haven't done in ages. Just some sort of recommendations, not necessarily knitting related, but things I'm, I'm interested in. So the first thing is this book, Print Pattern Sew. I think it's been out for about six months and it's been, um, I just finally had some sort of available cash to spend on something like this, and I was very curious. I think it's a really good book. So it's mainly about block printing your fabrics. So it's got a lot of techniques and um, some stencily kind of ideas, how to make your own block print, what kind of um, things to consider, how to really sort of carve your own um, print and, and things to consider when you're printing on fabric. Lots of, of practical stuff as well as design inspiration and tons of patterns. She's got like maybe four basic patterns. Is that right? Is it four or more? More than four. Oh yes. Cap sleeve blouse, full skirt, espadrilles, apron, short sleeve dress, coat, short sleeve belt, yeah, short sleeved blouse, cap sleeved dress, Scarves, I might start there. Scarves, clutch, tote bag, crossbody bag. So yeah, those are all in the back of, sorry about that, all in the back of the book here. Um, sorry. So my dream would be to kind of make some paint out of natural dyes. I don't know how likely that is, and I haven't looked into that yet in here. I haven't, maybe she does talk about that. Um, yeah, there she is, Jen Hewitt. She's the author, and um, really excited to delve into that. Play with it more this summer, maybe on some linens. Yeah. So, hang on, I'm gonna let in my dog. You're getting no cookies. Oh, I wanted to say I videoed um, the final part of me making the fly on the Morgan jeans, of me opening it up. It's kind of fun. I may or may not insert it into this video. Depends on how technology treats me. 
Hey, so I've just sewn in a fly on my new Morgan jeans. This is typically a um, button fly pair of jeans, but I wanted to show you this really awesome transformation when you open up the fly. It's just so much fun. So I've sewn in the zipper, um, and then here is the, the oh, I, I don't know, what is this piece called? The fly extension or the fly guard, maybe? Anyway, so that's now sewn in, and I've overstitched or overlocked the edges. Um, just using an overcast foot. I have these really pretty pocket bags. Here's one of the pockets. Here's the coin pocket. So yeah, so the next step here is to remove some, oops, sorry, is to remove some basting stitches um, right here, just with a seam ripper, and then the fly is revealed. It's all very exciting, so I thought I would do it with you guys, with you folks. I'm trying to stop using the word guys. I'm not a guy. I'm sure lots of you people aren't guys either, so yeah, I'm still playing around with good replacement words for that. All right, so I've started. I'm just going to unpick this ever so carefully. Um, goodness. Don't want to catch any of the fabric, so I'm being very careful. Here we go. And I need to stop occasionally to um, check my camera because I have a long history of, um, well, no, I have a short history of not recording <laughs> a tutorial video in frame. Uh, so I'm trying to fix that, expand my skills. Uh, so yeah, so the Morgan jeans are a, fly, a button fly front. Um, but I have just followed the instructions from the ginger jeans so along, also a closet case pattern, uh, and just install a zip fly instead, just because I find it quite a magical construction process, um, which culminates in this reveal. You can see, ooh, the zipper's coming. Let's see, oh, here it's coming a little faster. <laughs> I wonder if I should, no. I'm just gonna see if I should go at this from the back side of the work, but I don't think I will. <clears throat> Probably would have been simpler if I had used a different color thread, like a contrasting thread to do this piece, but who wants to change out thread versus just one little basting seam? especially since um, you're already changing out top stitching thread for regular thread, et cetera, et cetera. So, let me see, yeah, I'm getting there. I don't know if you can hear my son making strange noises in the other room, laughing at something. Oh my goodness. Um, Alice is around here somewhere, Al, Alice are you? She's with you? Okay. Is that what you're laughing at? Is that? Oh, here she comes. Ta-da! Goodness, I hope I did this right. So now I need to pull out all these threads along this edge. Yes, yes indeed. So, I will bring this zipper down and chop it off, making sure that I have Look at that. Awesome. Very awesome. Very cool. So I will just zip this up to maybe here now, and this will all get chopped off this stuff here. And yeah, look at that. My ginger jean, uh, ginger jeans, my Morgan jeans fronts. They are completed. So things I'm watching and listening to. The Great British Sewing Bee is back on. And felt like it got a slow start, but I'm really enjoying it now. And uh, yeah, there's a new host. He's all right. A little funny. Funny's good. Um, great people, as always. Interesting challenges. It's a little less um, let's teach the masses how to sew than it used to be. I feel like maybe people, at least in Great Britain, know their stuff more and they don't have to be as didactic as they used to be. But there's still stuff to learn, I feel like. Um, 
And I actually crave podcasts like that, that really um, sort of take things down to the nitty gritty of sewing. Like, I'm sure there are things that I am doing in my sewing practice that aren't really technically correct, or maybe there are ways to do things that are better than the ways I've just figured out myself. I'd really love a podcast that gets into the nitty gritty like that, and I haven't found one yet. Um, sometimes Lauren Guthrie posts videos that I find really instructive, Guthrie and Ghani, but I'm really not interested so much in these videos of, here's this pattern, and I made it, and this is how I changed it a little. I'd like to know, like, real, like, how-to such-and-such technique. I don't really like watching classes, like a craftsy class on sewing. I don't, I don't know, something about the style doesn't get grab me. Anyway, if you know of any video podcasts on sewing that really, I don't know, maybe tackle hems for exactly, and or for example, it was a good day to talk into a camera, the day I can't talk. Um, anyway, if you know of a sewing podcast that gets into uh, the real how-tos of specific techniques, I think that's what I'm looking for. Tips of the trade, tips and tricks. So then, the audio podcast that I've been enjoying, um, one is food related, and it's called um, what's it called? Friends with Recipes. I'm really enjoying Friends with Recipes. Just laughing at things going on in my backyard right now. Um, it's an American woman who lives in London, and she goes over to friends and acquaintances' houses, and who are co they cook her a meal, and so you get a recipe. And a recipe idea, and a meal idea out of it, and they talk about food and other things as well. Um, different episodes have been better than others, but I have, oh my gosh, I made a wonderful um, Spanish chicken stew. A delicious one with um, smoked paprika and saffron and chorizo and chicken, and I added a few other things to it. It was delicious. Um, so, Friends with Recipes. Uh, and then another one by Layla F. Saad, um, the Good Ancestor podcast. And I have been having to take it in smaller bits and pieces because they can be very intense. Sorry, my dog. Anyway, um, it, it's been a concept that's been really interesting and seriously. Alice, chill. My dad is outside, and he brings her little treats and deposits them in front of our door. I think there's a cucumber out there, like a slice of cucumber for her. So she's losing it right now. I may have to let her out yet again. Yay. Thank you, Sparky. Anyway, Layla F. Saad, The Good Ancestor pod podcast. It's a concept that I've never considered before, and it's an incredibly valu valuable one. Um to look at how you live your life. What are you leaving behind? What's your legacy? Um, what will you give to the world? So, and not just in terms of, um, you know, do you have biological descendants? Really, you do have biological descendants. It can be, I don't know, somewhere else on your family tree, but in the broader sense of, you look back at the people who came before you is that type of ancestor. Not necessarily that you're related to them, but that they changed things in a way that has made your life better. So yes, I've been enjoying exploring that. And I think it ties into, in a lot of ways, um, the works of Clarissa Pinkola Estes. And I've been listening to her books as well, audiobooks. Um, but I love, love, love her. She wrote Women Who Run With the Wolves, and um, she has a lot of audio talks, audio books. Um, she's a Jungian psychiatrist, psychologist, psychologist, um, who is a cantadora and a storyteller and um, delves into archetypes and sort of global myths and um, very connected to um, the earth, which is our ancestors. Anyway, um, really loving that stuff. Now, the last podcast is fiber-related, 
and it's called Reverberate, and it's by uh, it's put out by the women who own A Verb for Keeping Warm in Oakland, California. And they really go through their fiber shed and their whole um, making of their yarns from farmers of cotton and wool. And is there silk in there yet? I don't think so. Their dyers, their mills, their designers, and I really love their holistic way of looking at their fiber output. So that is Reverberate. Um, so Reverberate, the Good Ancestor podcast, Friends with Recipes, the Great British Sewing Bee. Yeah. And, um, oh yes, and this book, Print Pattern Sew. That's all. I'm going to let my dog out to eat her cucumber. Perhaps the next time you see me, I will have cast on the Samfrey. Fingers crossed. I just need to wait for the right time. The right moment. We'll see. An unexpected snowfall, maybe, would get me going. Anyway, it's been great chatting with you all. I hope you're all well, and take care until next time.